Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to create this bronzy cat eye smoky. Um, if you like this type of look, then keep on watching. First, we're going to start off by prepping the eyes because I'm going to go heavier on the eyes. I'm going to use an eye primer. This is Max Soft Ochre, Soft Ochre, Soft Ochre, uh, and I'm just going to use a synthetic brush to apply this. Um, LCE3. By the way, I already have a full face on to save time today. I took Cat to her third swimming lesson today and I know she's not crying from pain she's just crying because she's scared but I'm like laughing and crying the entire time she's there so I think even my makeup came off underneath my eyes a little bit but you know she's learning it's day three and she's crying less and doing more so it's all for the good of it although I don't want to do this to her she's gonna go through it at some point and I'd rather it be now then when she's older and she understands more. I'm actually just using the Minimalist palette in Blank Start over my brow bone. So I'm just taking uh, this M575 brush using the Minimalist in Tone Up and just building up a crease. I'm just going to define my crease a little bit, starting lightly building my way up. Because I'm going to go darker on the eyes, my crease is going to be a little darker than usual because the darker your lids are, the darker your crease needs to be unless you're doing like a full smoky eye so that the crease stands out and the definition of your eyes stand out as well. Otherwise, this color will just disappear. Because I'm only going to go dark around the ends, I don't know how dark the uh, lid color will be. I haven't even decided what color I'm using there, so you can always add that later. Okay, so I'm going to use a Morphe palette here. I think I'm going to use the... Dare to Create palette in 39A. Yeah, that's plenty of beautiful browns in here. I am going to use the shade Sunder. It's like it's like the tone up from my palette, but a little bit more coppery. So we're just gonna use that to deepen and darken and start really building up that crease. I always like starting at the ends because this is where we have more of a hollow than here. Well, we do have more of a hollow here, but because you have less space here and more space there, you ha you can apply more shade here than you can in this area, if that makes sense. And because I'm going to do a cattier look, I'm going to blend this outward and then bring it in. This palette is such a great palette. It has all warm shades on top, all cool shades on the bottom, and a perfect mixture of shimmers and mattes. So it's really like an all-in-one palette, and then it has contour shades all across the middle. But you can always use contour shades to contour your eyes, just like I am right now. So I just wait until this brush is almost done with product, and then I wing it out. Because I don't want to have a harsh line over there. So I'm just going to take my... Um, Velvet sponge, I'm going to use it dry because I've already applied my foundation. All I really need is to draw a wing at the end of my eye. And then we're going to set a lot of powder right underneath in a V shape. And this is the Laura Mercier translucent powder. We're going to go in there and define it even more but this will help your shadow not fall. And this is great because it almost even like guides for you where you're gonna put your eyeliner. And you can see if you did something wrong or if you went too high or too low. And if you did, you just dust it off. Now I can already see I really like the definition of this one, but this one's kind of going a little round. And it's just because the shape of my eyes are so different from each other that sometimes it just needs a little work. Just gonna look straight at myself. And what I tend to do, the reason I love working on clients more than I do on myself is because on a client, I can have them like look down, look left, look right, have them move their heads to see how it looks from different angles. Uh, when I do it on myself, I just kind of have to, you know, turn my head around, but it's still not the perspective I want, basically. Now, I'm taking that same brush, M575, by the way, this is a great brush. I love, love, love this pointy tip on this brush. Laura Mercier used to have a very, very similar brush that I was obsessed with for years, and then I could never find it again. Or, 
what happened, what had happened was I think I used it in the same way so much because you really just use the point and twirl it around that it had just shaped itself to this. I don't know, but I never found that brush again. Um, so I'm going to use even a darker color starting from the outer corner. It's called Evolve. And it's, again, very, very similar to the same family of colors I've been applying. Just a little bit darker. And we're just going to start from the outer corner. Using the same brush, flicking it out. And then whatever's left on the brush, I'll blend it all the way through. Honestly, I haven't done a dramatic look like this. I always say that every time I do a tutorial because all of this is dramatic because I normally have nothing on my eyes. Uh, but these are the type of looks that I would do on clients and never really on myself, only because it, I think I would just do it so much throughout the day. I'd do a look like this like 10 times in a day. So when it comes to me, I would just put on mascara. It was just so much easier and quicker. Now I'm just taking a fluffy brush from Elsie. This is E1. It's just a crease brush, and we're just gonna blend all of this out so that you don't see any harsh lines. Moving up to the brows. Okay. Next step, we're going to get a flatter brush. I'm using Smith brush number 253. It's small, it's tapered, it works really well, really well in the corner of the eyes. And I'm gonna use that darkest shade that I just applied, which was Evolve. And we're gonna apply this, there we are, right at the end of the eye. Blending across the lash line. Don't blend so much up here because you still wanna keep your wind eff wing effect. Starting at the lash line, applying it almost like a V in the outer corner, but then just blending it down towards the lash line. Let's do that again. I'm just reapplying this over and over to intensify it without using a darker shade. Sometimes with darker shades, it's so hard to get that smooth blend and transition that you'd rather work with a lighter one and then just layer and build your way up. The great thing about these type of brushes are that if you use it flat, it gets really thick and wide. And if you use it sideways, you can almost use it like an eyeliner. That's why I chose this brush. So we're starting to build that cat eye smoky softer version. What we're going to do now is take a card. I'm going to use the award-winning foundation is back postcard because I can't find my business cards. So what I would do normally is do this freehand and I would usually use like a pencil or a gel liner of some sort so that you get the intensity. But for those of you watching who wants to actually be able to do this, we're going to use it with eyeshadows and we're going to use a little postcard to guide you. You can use a tape if you want to. In my opinion, a tape is, um, I don't know, tape is a little harsh. <laughs> and also, sometimes when you apply tape, you might be applying it the wrong way. So no matter what you do with the eyeshadow, it's just not going to work. So with the postcard, you can actually maneuver your way because sometimes we start great and then if we see that, you know, we pull it away and see that it's going too low or too high, we can still shift the direction of the postcard. So enough talking. I'm going to use... Uh, L13, which is a lip brush for liquid lipsticks or an eyeliner, and I'm going to dip into the blackest shade in the uh, Morphe palette in the shade Muse. And we're just going to apply. So what you want to do is just take that postcard, follow your lash line, and that's exactly where we've put that translucent powder, right? So that's going to even help you guide. And you're going to just start right here. Creating a line and all that fallout that it may or may not leave ends up falling out on the postcard. All right, just gonna go back, dip some more. So, first I create a line because I really, really want an intense black there. And then we're gonna attach it right in here. Try not to move the postcard if you're comfortable with where it is. Voila, that's pretty bomb. Not gonna lie, I never use these things, this is fun. All right, if you decide you wanna make it longer, you're just gonna go ahead and put it exactly where it was and just lightly flick it out. Yeah, I like that more. So this look is great in a sense where you can decide how dramatic or natural you wanna be. I can leave this as is or take the liner all the way through 
and call it a day, but because I want to show you guys how to make this a little bit more dramatic, I'm going to go the extra mile. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. You're going to measure to your lash line right in there, keeping it as close to the postcard as possible towards the end. And then you can bring it in a little bit thicker towards your lash line. I'm going to pick up more black, intensify it slightly more. Let's see where we're at with that. Good. I'm going to just take a Q-tip and flick up that end a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy. So, we're going to pick up that brush that we were just using, dip into the black, and now we're going to apply it almost on the lid. Kind of like your eyeliner. How would you apply your wing eyeliner? You're going to do the same thing here. Except you're going to make it a little thicker right where your fold is. So when you make this area right in between um, the higher and lower part of your crease, it'll end up straightening out your eye if you can see that. So I'm going to clean off this brush just on a clean towel and diffuse that line. See that? You can do the same thing here. And I'm not liking how fuzzy this is looking because I used a Q-tip, but we can always go ahead and clean that up with concealer and I'll show you how to do that if you do mess up. All right, so you can stop here, but again, we're gonna take it a step higher, going back into my Smith brush, dipping into the black. And we're gonna bring that onto the lid. Because you have a little bit of that shading with the brown that we did, it's going to help this part blend a lot easier and diffuse that black. So we're just going to lift the crease. Basically, you're just taking what, where it's at and then just adding, thickening, layering. I'm going to bring it in here a little bit. I'm making it a little thinner, coming to the front. I don't know how thick I want to go. I think I want to make this really dramatic. Hmm. We'll see. I'm going to make that a little bit longer and thicker. So we're just taking that and layering that. All right, so what I'm going to do is pick up my first brush, which was the Morphe one. Dip into a dark brown. We're going to use, let's see. Oh, there's a color called cat eye here. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use the tip of that brush, starting from that crease, blending into the crease, and intensifying this area. So you could go in there with black right away, but because you don't want it to look too dramatic right away, it's best to use brown. Just using the tip of that brush, Softening, blending, softening, blending. And then you're going to do that right next to the black right here. And you're going to have to go back and forth with the black and the brown until you get that blend that you want. I'm just buffing out all the ends of the black shadow with brown shadow. Okay, now I'm just going to take that brown and then we're just going to wing it out some more. Using that same brush, only, only using the tip of the brush, dipping into black, reapplying the black where you first applied it, blending it into that brown. So the more you blend it into each other, the softer blend you will have. But you need that brown as a base to help you really intensify and get a smooth finish. Right, dipping into that black again. Build, build, and then we're gonna take the black and start smoking it out. Very light touches, black goes a long way. So very, very light touches. See how that went from like a two to an eight real quick? Black goes a long way, so just work in very small motions and keep it very subtle. All right, so dipping into cat eye once again. 
blending that black out in the crease and we're just gonna bring that in a little bit so believe it or not this is a very bridal look for me that I would do for my clients this is what they would ask for not this dramatic some people like to do dramatic some people like it with the first layer of black that I applied uh, in the beginning of the video but this is very very common for brides in my industry and this is the type of look that they, they would always want so I would do this about like 10 times a day um, but I am going to pump this up so I'm going to use so at this point you can leave your eyes nude as is put in a little nude shadow finish your liner um, golds look really nice because it contrasts with the black really well but I'm going to go ahead and go extra once again using the LC uh, Jewel and Garnet. I haven't shown you guys how that looks so I'm going to apply that but underneath it I'm going to use the new Girlactic Metallic Shadow Sticks and this is just like a bronzy cream shadow stick. I was sent this last week and I fell in love with it. So I'm going to use this and although you don't need water or base or anything with uh, the jewels, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to make it extra vibrant. So you're just going to take that and apply it all over your lids. Any area that you see white, you're just going to fill that in. And then I'm just going to take my pinky and blend that out. So it should be blending into all that um, powder blend you did earlier. By the way, what do you guys think of my backdrop? I decided to go back to my old roots and bring the white backdrop back. I just think it looks cleaner. I don't know. I just, I try to do the, you know, more lifestyle background, but it just, it's not for the looks that I create, you know? Grabbing the LC Jewel and Garnet. Also, I have Topaz, which you guys have seen me use. I love, love Topaz. Here's Garnet, so it's a little bit bronzier. I'm going to use the pinky. And we're just going to apply this all over the lid. I love this stuff. Should we add glitter? Do I go the extra layer and add glitter? My niece is giving me a thumbs up. Of course you would want me to add glitter. She's into justice and sparkly headbands, sparkly shoes. So just to get these inner corners right here, I'm going to switch into a smaller brush using the LCE2 brush, dipping into the same shadow. Just trying to get as close to the tear duct area as possible. Blending into the crease. Now I'm going to take the eyeliner brush from Elsie, L13, dipping into that black shadow and going as close to the lash line as possible to create a little bit of depth around my lash line. You can do this with a liquid liner if you want, a pencil. I just want the whole look to be really soft. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to do that. So what we're going to do is just take a brush. I'm using the LC F9. And we're just going to dust all of this off. No fallout. Yay. And if you do have fallout, it'll just fly out with the rest. What I'm not feeling, to be honest with you, is the fact that I touched this with a Q-tip and it looks all like weird now. So I'm going to take a wipe. And you do need nails for this. You're going to use your nail. You're going to get as close to that line as possible. And you're going to carve it out. All right, so I'm just going to take some concealer. This is the Morphe Nude with the Cosmetics Concealer Brush. And we're just going to carve out the liner as close as possible. Flicking it down, and then I just like to use my finger so that you don't actually see the color. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lashes on, and then we're just going to figure out what we're doing on the bottom part of the eyes. I'm using the House of Lashes Allura Light. I've never used these before, but I love their light version because it's just so light on the eyes. <laughs> Stay. Okay. 
I need to maneuver them so you just take them and then you just kind of bend them around like that so that it doesn't pop off there we go I hate having mascara on when I do eye makeup because I hate eyeshadow fallout like hate just like how I hate powder on the brows I hate eyeshadow fallout which is why we're gonna apply some mascara using the velour um, tweezer looking thing just to press my natural lashes to the falsies I love this stuff taking my lashful mascara starting from the root next up we're gonna take that galactic metallic shadow stick by the way this is in the color desert we're gonna apply this underneath the eyes and you should close these when you're not using them because they will dry out there we go all right using my lost my brushes we're gonna use the pencil brush from my line e5 from lc dipping into garnet from LC, it's the jewel that I put on top of my eyelids. And we're gonna apply this all underneath the eyes. And what this will do is it'll balance out all of this. So when you have so much going on on top of your eye, you almost need that extra layer underneath it so it doesn't look just heavy on top. I don't know if I wanna do bronze liner on the inside or black. Maybe I'll just do black. Why not? Let's go all out. I'm gonna take the Monster Ardency Black Eyeliner. I don't even know if they have these anymore, I think. It was discontinued. I'm gonna coat the tight line right underneath my lashes. You guys know I hate doing this, but it is necessary. All right, we're gonna do the waterline as well. If you have small eyes, I highly suggest you don't do this. Either do a bronze color, or if you have really small eyes, I would just go in there with a nude instead. We are almost done. I'm gonna take that L13 LC brush, dip into black, and we're gonna smoke out just the outer corner of your bottom lashes so that it can connect together towards the end. So just a little bit, you do see what it does. It just kind of makes it a little bit more catty, again, without going in there with a harsh liner. Just a little bit of shadow goes a long way. All right, the last thing, Lashful Mascara on the bottom lashes. Because I don't have time to redo underneath my eyes, I'm just gonna use some powder instead. I'm using the uh, Meron Celebrate HD Contour Highlight Powder Palette. This is what I usually give my students. I'm using a Real Techniques brush, just pressing it in. Because I already have makeup on underneath it, I don't want to move the makeup around, so it's best to press it in. Underneath the eyes, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And just press that into place. You know what? I should switch into a smaller brush. Let's do this one. Morphe E21 to get in right in that area. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're back to life. Right underneath here. Switching again to a bigger uh, E8 brush, same color, bringing it right down here. I love these powders, especially if you work on set. It's great to have these because you have all the shades you need in there. You can use it for contouring, powdering, setting in the skin. Contouring, powdering, contouring, highlighting. Lastly, taking that same shade that's all over my face and buffing it all together. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Fix the hair. Let's get into some blush. I'm going to use the Morphe. What palette is this? 8W. And I'm going to use an apologetic, which is a neutral bronzy shade right here, using the Dose of Colors Tapered Blush Brush. I love this color. So me. Temples. All right, 
I'm going to take a E1 brush from Elsie. Use one of these powders to contour my nose a little bit because I got rid of it. And we're just going to go right around the sides. Lips, using the new Jouer lip liner in Nude. I'm not sure if this is new, but they just resent this with two mini um, lippies. I think they're selling them as collections right now. I'm gonna overline. This looks pinker on me than I thought, but it's gonna color in a little bit. I overline the heck out of the top lip. And as long as you color in from the sides, it won't be that obvious. Okay, using a natural. I love this. I just don't know if I'm loving it with the eyes. But what I do have here is her opal. I don't know if it's a lip topper or, or like a metallic. I'm going to let this dry for a second. Or if it's like a metallic liquid lip. Mmm, that's pretty. Alright, last thing we got to pop off to bring the whole look together is the LC Skin Reflector Highlighter using the shade Rosy Blaze. And I'm gonna use a fan brush E11 from LC, mixing all these colors together. And popping it up right on top of my cheekbones. Down the bridge of the nose, tip of the nose, chin. This is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.